Welcome to the sidebar. I'm Clint Myers Novak, filling in for Sebastian Morales, who is currently in Puerto Rico polishing shoelaces. Stetson DeWitt is a dog trainer behaviorist who is most famous for his dog talk show, The Bark. Most recently, Stetson was featured in Modern Dog Magazine for his book, Dog Day Afternoon, which features transgender puppy love as one puppy holds up a mail truck in order to pay for his lover's operation. Stetson has, was awarded the Excellence in Journalism and Outstanding Contributions to the Pet Industry Award. He has been cited as an expert in solutions to behavior problems, training issues, chewing, barking, mealtime, and door dashing. Stetson, welcome to the sidebar. Yeah. Now, it is very nice to have you here. I myself am a mm-hmm. dog lover. Mm-hmm. I love animals. Sure. I'd like to talk a little bit about your book, first of all. Um, what exactly inspired you to make Dog Day Afternoon? Well, you know, it's a, it's a book. I wrote it. Uh, I had the idea. I wrote it down. Uh, you know, it's on an afternoon. I suppose if I wrote it at night, it would be Dog Day Night. Uh, it was based sort of on uh, Al Pacino. Mm-hmm. Uh, I couldn't think of a doggy name for Al Pacino, so I left him out of the book. Mm. But essentially, uh, it deals with issues of the day and dogs. Uh, might I suggest... Dal Pacino. I uh, can suggest it, but the book's been written. You know, it's a it's a quick book. It's a quick uh, read. I think it's about ten pages. Oh, it's your book is about ten pages long. It is. Yeah, it's mostly illustrations. Uh, it shows uh, starts with a puppy. Okay. Uh, it starts with another puppy falling in love with that puppy, then realizing that puppy is not the puppy that the puppy thought it was. Uh, the puppy wants to be somebody else, but the puppy doesn't have the money to be somebody else, so the puppy can't be themselves. So the puppy sets out. And Rob's mail truck. Now, little does he know that there's not much money in the mail, so he has to open all the letters. Uh, and unfortunately for the mailman, he has to wait uh, wait that out. And I used to be a mailman, uh, very briefly. Uh, it's uh, it's a very monotonous job. Dogs always chase you. That's sort of how I grew to love dogs. Dogs would chase me. I started chasing them back. We fell in love, and uh, puppy love turned into a dog day afternoon. Our our beloved researcher, the intern Addie Harper, is actually holding up a copy right now of your book and. It looks very colorful, and she has a lot of different paper cuts from all the pages. She's very clumsy with her hands. Yeah, well, I signed it. Hmm. Oh, yep. It's right there. It's right there on the uh, the buttocks of one of the first dogs in the book. To hmm. Addie, sorry about your face. Stetson. Yeah, the, may she recover very quickly. Now, moving into your, uh, your talk show, The Bark. Yeah. You started that, uh, it's been about... Six years. Six years. And you are considered one of the father figures, if you will, in uh, dog behavior control. Well, I don't, I don't consider myself that. People consider me that. Uh, I won't correct them. I'm not a corrector. Mm-hmm. I'm a doer. Well, you are a corrector of bad dog behavior. That's true. And it seems like you are very good at it. What are some your some of your most well known behavioral techniques? Uh, you go through those in extensive detail in your talk shows sometimes for hours but give us a, a snippet of of something i tell you what you give me the dog i'll give you the method i myself would love to have a uh, a purebred golden retriever i think that they are a beautiful flowing animals but i know that they can be very hard to tame they are very lively and energetic so if you have any sort of tips for dealing with the energy yeah. Oh, but you have to you have to sap the energy. Okay. Um, much like tapping a maple tree, mm-hmm. uh, you sap the energy uh, by playing very slow music. You slow down talking to the dog. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. With me. Okay. I'm here. Okay. So you look at the dog and you say, "Hey, hey, buddy," right away. He's not chewing. He's looking at you. And then you slowly back away and you leave. And you don't come back for hours. Mm -hmm. And you do it again. And you do it again. And you do that for months and months. And eventually that dog will not chew. That dog won't do anything. Well, sometimes the dog talks slower than me and I back away. Mm -hmm. But the dog backs away and leaves me home. Sometimes I'll open the door and I'll let him dash. Huh. Sometimes you have to become the dog, and the dog has to become the trainer. Well, I think uh, for the dog to become the trainer, the dog must become the trainer. 
Okay. Okay, I see. So is is there some way that you can speak the dog's language? Because I have tried many different languages. I found Spanish to be an appropriate yeah. language for dogs. No, it's it's all in the eyebrows, Clint. It's eyebrows. You have to you have to count the hairs. Oh, okay. So the m- number of hairs that you raise is a different word. Well, I don't know if you raise them. I don't know what that means. Uh, I know there's a certain amount of hairs in your head, and you count them, and uh, there you go. Oh, well. It's like uh, playing poker. If uh, if you were going to sit down and you were going to count the cards, uh, you'd have the advantage. I take the time to count the hairs on the dog's face, therefore I have the advantage on the dog. If the dog was counting the hairs on my face, well, maybe it would be even, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Because I don't believe dogs can count, uh, at least not past 10. Uh, Back to your book, though, uh, Dog Day Afternoon. You won an award for it. The uh, Let me see. The Excellence in Journalism and Outstanding Contributions to the Pet Industry Award. I, for one, was not aware that this was an award before. Oh, yep. Yeah, yep. It's an award. Uh, I'm glad they shortened the name. Uh, it was too long before. Mm-hmm. Um, it was longer. Wow. that's they. Yeah, it's a good length where it is now. No, I think 40 or 50 characters is perfect for a name. Mm-hmm. For an award. If it has to be tweetable, that's what we say over here. Uh, Is that what you say? No, uh, I just, the first time I've ever said it. But no. I, I think it should. It's, not, it's okay. It's not bad. Go for it. Should be on Take the mug. It. Yeah, own it. It's yours. All right. Take it. Um, Take it, run with it, train it, uh, leash it. Leash it to your side. It's yours. So you were given this by the, what was the committee that awarded you? this award uh something called a global pet expo Mm -hmm. uh you know it's not open to the general public uh it's essentially dog people a little little gland handing a little reach arounds and how's your father's little proper uh side swipes and uh Mm -hmm. and pocket tugs yeah Um, you know it's uh, a little bit of tug tap it's network it's a it's a networking thing uh boop scoops it's essentially a uh it's a doggy think tank uh, so we all get together and we, we brainstorm uh, out of the box thinking on new techniques on how to train dogs, uh, toys, uh, contraptions, uh, ways, prop, more innovative ways to feed mm-hmm. your dog. Uh, like, for instance, did you know you cannot put a dog in a microwave? That I had a pretty good idea of because it is a living creature. Excellent. Okay. So, so most people know that. Mm-hmm. But you'd be surprised how many don't. So now we need to have warning labels on all microwaves that say, do not put a dog in there. You know, I've always been interested in those sorts of labels because you think about who the first person was to do that. Uh, is there is there a video or is there recorded evidence or something of a person? Oh, well, I don't know. I'm sure there is out there somewhere. But I know that once you put dog, the problem that we run into is now, well, what about the cats? What about the cats? What would people put the cats in the microwave? People would, or, put, people would 100% put cats in the microwave if they, they put, weren't, if they didn't know. Because now, when you specify uh, dogs, mm-hmm. uh, you have to specify cats. And then, if you specify cats, you have to specify hamsters. Mm-hmm. And uh, the list never ends. Well, never so, worked. you can just put pets. But if you put pets, it's vague. People mm-hmm. don't get it. Uh, you might they put think fish. It could be a rock. Mm. People will have a pet for anything. Uh, there are certain pets that you cannot train. I know I am a dog trainer, but I am a behaviorist and I am a, uh, I am a pet trainer at large, so I can train other animals. If you want to train a rock, you have to put wheels on it. We're, we're going to keep it specifically for, for uh, our intense purposes. Dogs. Here. Animal dogs. We're talking about dogs. dogs, right. Sometimes when I'm playing trivia games, uh, I like to have my dog around with me and I show him the different answers and the answer he wags his tail at the hardest is a lot of times the correct one so i i think so you're looking at your dog from behind i'm looking at i'm looking at my dog from in front but his, his tail is is very okay gotcha go so i feel like there is a uh, some part of an animal instinct to be talked about but my dog is not telling me to, to murder someone no most dogs don't uh mm-hmm. every once in a while a dog does uh and then murders are committed uh such as like the son of sam Mm. Um, I, I have reason to believe that some of these school shootings are happening because of dogs, mm. uh, untrained dogs. Uh, it's the sort of thing that I try to bring people to my website. They can come on the bark. And we, uh, you know, I told them and I told uh, the American people that essentially I think that it's uh, pets are convincing some of these people to shoot up places. It has nothing to do with guns. It has everything to do with dogs. And if they want to fix it, they can come to me or one of my trained disciples 
who are out there around the country and they're uh, equipped to and for a very low fee they'll uh, uh, unhypnotize the dog or unhypnotize mm-hmm. you or hypnotize you however you want to uh, work it from my proprietary methods uh, and I think I myself can cure most of the gun violence in America uh, simply through my uh, business so guns don't kill people dogs do dogs interesting and interesting because I'm such a dog advocate it uh-huh. pains me to say it and most dogs are good dogs most but dogs. some dogs are bad dogs this and is... you, but you, but the bad dog isn't the problem. Mm-mm. No, it's what they're saying is the problem. So you just have to retrain their language uh, receptors. So you talked about rescuing dogs. You rescue dogs from the streets and from bad situations. Do you sometimes? Are you dog napping dogs? Well, I wouldn't call it uh, dog napping because we we uh, the you know the, the tip would come from our information hotline. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're up all hours of the night. We're always listening. I'm always on guard. There's a dog signal that they shoot out into the sky, and uh, that's how I find it. And uh, I get my team together with a little whistle. I have a dog whistle. Mm-hmm. Everybody's on the same frequency. Mm-hmm. We meet on a rooftop because there's no better place to meet. Uh, we have zip lines connecting the buildings, and we have the dog mobile. And the dog mobile will get us to our location. Uh, I'm in the tri-state area, but we have different uh, factions around the country. And uh, I want to say we're the A team, we're the uh, we're the Bark team, and uh, the B team, if you will. Well, the B team would be if we were uh, rescuing honey, I think. Oh, uh, yes, know, that, that is fair. Um, that's fair. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm sure if you have a better name, we're we're taking suggestions, but nobody seems to come up with anything better. So for now, we're the Bark team, and Bark the Dog team, Squad. Uh, I believe dog, the domain. For Dog Squad was taken, mm. uh, so we didn't go with that. Uh, it's not not great for marketing. Mm. Uh, not, you know, you do have to market your business, even though we're we're doing a charitable uh, thing here. There's a lot of preparation. We, uh, you know, it's about the operations. We're very uh, diligent. We have we're armed. We're trained. We are, mm. we're we're a. I wouldn't say we're a dog militia, but if it came to it, uh, we are. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you know, we have these self operations. We. We have our uh, we have an explosives man. We have a medic. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have uh, team leads, mm-hmm. uh, and sometimes you'll see us in the street. And we're we're running, uh, you know, a, a test operations. Mm-hmm. And you also have, I understand, reformed dogs that run with you. Of yeah, course. Oh yeah, of course. We of course we have dogs in our unit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and. Uh, that's how we go. I can't give you the very the specifics. Uh, I suppose if you want to do a uh, a ride along, mm-hmm. uh, you could do that. Ah, uh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'll strap you to my back and we'll go. I would really love that to uh, be able to to run the run the rooftops and and yeah. be part of the bark team. Oh yeah, uh, I'd, we'd love to have you. We'd leash you up. And to train the dog, you must become the dog, and I am the dog. Uh, I'm not a bounty hunter. Uh, but I'm close. A couple questions. What's your typical loadout, uh, your typical equipment for any rescue? And what are some of the more daring rescues that you've been on? Oh, well, uh, everybody has to have a whip. Mm -hmm. Uh, We don't actually use the whip. We actually have no idea what the whip is for, but we have to have one. Handcuffs are mandatory. Everyone needs a whip. Right. Handcuffs, uh, a whip, um, a whipped cream can. Mm-hmm. Just for the CO2. Mm-hmm. Um, Just in case you need to take a quick huff in order to get the energy flowing. Again. That's true. We started out with Cool Whip. It didn't work the same. The mm-hmm. tubs don't work the same as the aerosol cans. But uh, trial by fire here. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, what I use for, I have a grappling gun. Uh, you know, I don't, I think the what, you know, when you see somebody use a grappling gun in a movie, they shoot it up and then it takes them up. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know how where you get one of those because when I shoot it, it sort of just hooks on and then I can't tell you how many guns I've lost. I've snapped off my belt um, and then there's just grappling gun hanging from an adjacent building. Oh. Uh, and we found really that you don't need to uh, scale the side of a building really and to, to rescue a dog elevator and stairs is perfectly yeah, it seems, fine. It seems like that would be perfect. It's stealth enough, um, especially if you, uh, if you call ahead and you have the security guard just disarm the alarm, mm-hmm. I'll let you right up. Mm-hmm. It's really the stealth operation is, is getting the dogs out of the kennels mm-hmm. because that's a breeding ground. That's like a doggy cult. And Gonley knows what they're talking about in there when everybody goes home and they're unsupervised. 
uh, you know, they know that the end is near and we uh, try to turn that around and rescue them. Uh, but, you know, we don't want them to be euthanized. We want them to join the, uh, the, the revolution. Mm-hmm. So they become revolutionaries and we hypnotize them. And, uh, you know, it's all about, you know, uh, keeping our kids safe. And mm-hmm. now we just don't want our kids to become school shooters. So we have to take their dogs and reeducate them. Yeah, right, right. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of subliminal messages out there. I think, mm-hmm. I think Lassie is dangerous. Lassie is dangerous. I think dangerous. Rin Tin Tin is an accident waiting to happen. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Marley and Me, I think, can be a, a tragedy of epic proportions nationwide. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we had Jennifer Anderson as a sponsor. Mm-hmm. Um, then she started doing heroin and she stopped. She started doing heroin? No, oh, I don't know. Did she? Is that heroin? Oh, it wasn't heroin. I'm sorry. Uh, one other of your techniques I'd like to talk to you about. You have a specific technique that you use for, you've mentioned it before, door dashing. Uh, and it involves a two foot piece of wire and an apple core. Well, that's how you carry the dog. Uh, I like to keep my dog always on their guard. So sometimes the dog will be sleeping and I'll just come up behind him. The door will be open. Mm-hmm. And I'll pick him up and run out of the house with him and we'll just run down the block. So you door dash. I door dash with the dog. Mm-hmm. That's how you train the dog not to door dash. You teach him that door dashing is no fun. Mm-hmm. So I chase the mailman. I chase the ice cream truck with the dog. And you have to hold the dog tight. And the way to hold the dog tight is with the wire and with the apple. Mm-hmm. Apple in the mouth, wire around the neck. Mm-hmm. And you run. Now, if I was asleep and I got picked up in such a manner and run out the door, I think I would be a little reticent to do that in the future. Yes, well, unfortunately, uh, door dashing has become sort of a teen craze. And now mm-hmm. uh, teens are sneaking up on other teens and door dashing them. Ah, so this has become, your training technique has become a viral sensation. A sort of. Uh, like Tide see, Pod eating. Something like that. You'll see uh, kids of, God forbid, uh, your friend falls asleep in, your, in, the, in class, in English class. Uh, I've seen kids door dashed, attached to their desks. Um, I've seen kids door dashed, uh, sitting on the bench at a baseball game. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, if you fall asleep anywhere, you're uh, susceptible to a door dash. If you fall asleep anywhere and there's an entrance, a doorway. You have to go through a doorway. You have to go through a doorway. Otherwise, you're just a dash. It's, and that is not that is not the point. The point is to go through the door. It's true. It's true. No. Um, I, I've, I fortunately have not seen it yet tied to babies because babies is, uh, are, are, are you know, creatures, uh, fragile. But what? how do you think? But you can door dash a baby. You can DoorDash a baby. Should you DoorDash a baby is the I, question. I don't believe you should. DoorDashing a baby would be quite easy because babies are just in That's their true. cribs. That's true. And you just pick it up. I think not only is it dangerous, but it's also not as fun. But, uh, no, you shouldn't DoorDash a baby, but you can DoorDash a puppy. And part of the training is screaming uh, as you're running with the dog. You mm. have to scream you know, in close proximity to their face. Just blood curdling scream as loud as you can. Uh, yeah, blood curdling is really the key, mm-hmm. uh, and not everybody can do it. You know, we we, we train all of our trainers to, to be a, a blood curdler, uh, and it's all it all comes from the toes, the the, the way the, the toes curl when you scream. That's uh, it gets a full body uh, curdle. Stetson DeWitt, Dog Day Afternoon. Thank you very much for being here. Well, thank you, Clint. Uh, Anytime you want to uh, go on that ride along, you just let me know and we'll we'll strap you up and uh, we'll get you up there. Sounds like a dog day afternoon. It could be, or it could be a dog day morning. Or night. Or an afternoon, afternoon delight. Next week on the sidebar, planting trees in buckets can help, but it can hurt. I'm Clint Myers-Novak. Till next time.